Hello. Hi, guys. I'll wait for a few more people to pop on. Hopefully, you all got a notice from YouTube telling you I was going live. Hello, hello. When you pop in, say hi in the chat bar or the chat box. Hello, hello. Um, so I figure there's probably a good number of people that are still at work and things like that. Because I'm going live a little bit earlier than I have um, recently. So um, if you guys haven't already, sign up for my email list because I've been sending out like tips and tricks and advice and deals and all types of stuff all week long. So if you're interested in receiving some of that, sign up for my email list. I'm putting the link in the comment box and you just click that link and you can sign up for my email list. But hopefully a few more people log on. Um, I added a little um, title, I guess along with this live. Typically when I go live, I just answer a bunch of questions and things like that. And I'm definitely still going to do that. But I wanted to give this live like more of a topic and also allow you to ask questions. So um, I get a lot of questions of people asking me like, how my first year of uh, entrepreneurship has been going and how I was able to succeed or, you know, be able to pay my bills. That's an important one. Um, so I get a lot of questions about, like, just basically how I am sustaining my business and things like that. So um, if you follow me on Instagram, you know that last Sunday I um, participated in an event called Boss Talk Live. And, um, excuse me, I was a panelist. I was on a panel um, with three other entrepreneurs from St. Louis and we kind of just talked about our entrepreneurship journey and uh, just what it's looked like for us thus far, what we've learned, uh, things we wish we had changed along the way or just talked about our journey thus far. And so this morning I sent out an email to my email list just kind of documenting um, three reoccurring things that were talked about throughout the duration of um, that, uh, panel. And one of those things was that you cannot win alone. So I feel like a lot of people, when they go into entrepreneurship and they become self-employed, yes, you are relying on yourself to, you know, pay your bills and all that, but you don't have to do it alone. And honestly, you cannot do it alone. So that's not to say you need a business partner or, or you need an assistant or anything of that of that nature. It's just to say that you're going to need help in some way along uh, the journey. So um, it's not an easy, easy path at all. It hasn't been the easiest thing I've done in my life. I've had really, really hard days, some really, really hard months. If you guys follow me on, I think I posted it on Facebook, maybe. I'm not sure. So a bit of transparency. I'm all about being transparent and being honest with everybody. So in May of this year, I made $10,000 in May. Crazy. Never seen that much money in my life at one time, ever. Never made that much money as quick as I did in my life. So I made $10,000 in May. So excited, probably too excited. Definitely spent way more money than I should have. Then June came along. June, I moved into a brand new apartment. I think I took two trips in June. I think both of which I believe were work related. Anywho, in June, I only made $2,000. I went from $10,000 to $2,000. And I was in shock. I was depressed. I didn't know what to do with myself. And the reason why I believe that happened is because I did not pay attention to how my business was running in uh, May. I didn't document anything. I didn't pay attention to how things were working, what wasn't working, what was working. 
uh, who was interacting with me and who wasn't. I pay I pay no attention to anything except the dollars coming in. And so then when June came around, I wasn't capable of, of replicating what occurred in May because I didn't know what happened in May. All I knew was that I made $10,000. I had no idea how to make it happen again. So ever since May, I have been trying to figure out how to make that happen again. It has not happened again, but I know that it's possible at this point. So now I'm like in overdrive trying to figure out what I can do to um, make that happen again. So anyway, long story short, um, the purpose of this live, if you saw um, the title, um, I want to talk about creating the life that you want to live and asking for help. So um, when I quit my job, well, I didn't quit my job, my job closed. So when I decided to be full, a full time entrepreneur, um, I knew that ultimately I could create the life that I wanted to live. You made from that from the boutique. Oh, girl, no, not from my boutique alone. Of course not. No. Um, so when I when I lost my job, I knew that that I was given. In my head and in my heart, I felt like God had given me this opportunity to take control of my life and to create the life that I wanted to live. I had worked 12 years straight of retail or in retail and um, my job right before um, my last job also closed. And then um, this one closed. So I was like, OK, God is trying to tell me that I don't need to work. Like I could do this on my own. I know I can. My last job gave me a lot of freedom in the work that I did and I learned a ton. And so I when my job closed, I hit the ground running. So um, in the email that I sent out today uh, to my email list, for all of you guys who just logged in, um, I put a link to my um, email landing page in the chat bar or chat box so you guys can sign up for my emails because I've been sending out tips and tri tricks and advice and deals um, all week long. So sign up for my email list if you haven't already. But in my email today, I talked about basically how you will need help and you shouldn't be afraid to ask for help along the way. But help looks different for multiple people. So for me, I'm generally the type of person that can learn something quickly and I can learn it on my own. I enjoy doing research. I enjoy learning new things. So generally I go looking for things or information by way of like books or um, YouTube videos, um, things like that, things I can find online. Um, but then once I got more comfortable with being out there, you know, I started doing more of these videos and talking to strangers and stuff like that. So once I got a bit more comfortable with that, I started attending seminars. I started um, going to conferences, traveling to listen to influ influential people speak uh, in the, about their industry and, you know, how they were succeeding in their industry and things like that. So um, help looks different for different people. Some people need a accountability part partner. Some people need an actual coach. Somebody. Some people need a consultant. Some people need guided learning for um, a certain period of time. Uh, some people want to just learn it on their own. They're okay with opening up a book. It looks different for everybody, but understand that you will need help along the way and don't be scared to ask for the help. And often what I find is that Obviously, initially, we most of us go for the free help first and foremost. So we go looking for, you know, the YouTube videos and the Google advice and all that, which is great. Obviously, like some people have found me on Google, which is awesome. And uh, there are tons of people who provide amazing advice freely on the Internet. However, there does come a point in your business. I'm, I'm not going to say in your life, in your business where you will have to invest in yourself and invest in your business outside of buying the merchandise. So for me, once I had you know, taken in as much free advice that I could um, get and after I had um, attended the seminars and the webinars and the conferences and all that, I decided that I wanted to hire a coach. So I hired a coach for six weeks. My first coach, so everything in your business is, especially as a new business, is going to be trial and error. There's lots of risk involved. You're going to lose money on the path to make money. It's just what it is. I will not lie to you and tell you that you will not lose money along the way. You will. I have lost so much money in this year, but I keep saying that I took a lot of risks this year, but I know that I got further taking the risk that I took than I would have gotten if I had not taken the risk at all. So I hired a um, business coach, I want to say at the end uh, or the beginning of this year, I think it was, and I absolutely hated it. I got nothing 
from it. And that was when I look back at it, it was my fault. Uh, I didn't do enough research on that person. Um, I was only seeing what she had accomplished in her own business. And I had I didn't relate it to how she could help me in my business. So um the second time around, I hired a, I didn't hire a coach. The second time around, I took a course, but it was led by someone who was previously previously a coach. So that course was about marketing. Um, it didn't necessarily help me with my boutique per se, um, but it helped me a lot with like my consulting and uh, just how I present myself and my brand online and things like that. But anyway, long story short, Investing in yourself and asking for help looks different for different people. So understand that at some point you will have to ask for help. The help, although you are capable of getting free help on the Internet, at some point you will have to invest in yourself. So I'm going to leave it at that. Um, a lot of people ask me. So as you guys know, I have like multiple streams of income. If you didn't know, I have multiple streams of income. I have probably eight at this point. Uh, that was one thing that I knew going into my entrepreneurship journey. I knew that I couldn't just rely solely on the boutique. It was too brand new. I was still, am still, still uh, almost a year later building it, um, still figuring out exactly what I want it to be. And it's evolving and changing over time. So I knew going into entrepreneurship that I could not solely rely on one thing. So I sat down and created a plan. You guys know I talk about having a vision like all day, every day in all my videos. So I created a vision. I created a plan. Uh, I developed strategy and I figured out how I can make money from multiple avenues because I was not going to take the risk of relying on this one, um, you know, situation hope and hoping that it worked out. So I wrote out a list of um, the things that I thought I could make money from and they worked out. Some months I made more money from one thing than I did the next and um, it, it switched out over the months. But the key to the success that I found, um, especially in the first six months of my um, entrepreneurship journey, uh, in the first six months of my entrepreneurship journey, I was able to double my salary from my previous job. And I know that I was capable of doing that because one, I was very consistent in the work that I was doing. Two, I was very consistent in the content and the value that I was providing to the audience that I was providing it to. And three, it was because I had a plan in the first place. So in applying that to your boutique businesses, you need to have a plan. You need to develop a strategy. You need to be consistent and you need to provide value to the audience that you're serving. So don't feel like just because you're selling bomb, cute clothes, that that's going to be enough for your business to thrive. No, you got to be consistent in what you're doing. You need to believe in yourself. I forgot to mention that. You got to believe in yourself because if you're doubting yourself, then people are going to doubt you. So believe in yourself, be consistent, um, and provide value to the audience that you want to serve. So I won't talk too much more about myself. I know you guys are asking some questions over there. So um, let me see what you guys are saying. Um, hi, Jans. Please save this live. I'm at bingo with my son's school, but I want to see you so bad. I got you. I will definitely save it. Hey, Jan. Hey. Um, thank you for all that. You oh, you came to. I remember you go. You came to the retreat. Long time no see. Thank you for all that you do, Jan. I'm so excited to start my journey. You are truly a guide for us. You're welcome. Have you collaborate, collaborated with influencers or semi-famous person? How do you go about it? I have not collaborated with a semi-famous person. Um, I haven't collaborated with influencer for my own business, but I have for my previous job where I was a store manager. Um, so it was relatively easy. Um, our store was a brick and mortar store. So we knew we wanted to, to partner with somebody who was local. Um and who had an influence locally. So I used a lot of local uh, hashtags like St. Louis boutique, or not St. St. Louis uh, bloggers, St. Louis bloggers, things like that. Uh, St. Louis fashion and just research those hashtags to find um, people who I felt would resonate with our brand. And then I just kind of paid attention to the content that they uh, posted over a certain period of time. So I kind of just watched them for um, a bit to see how I felt about the content that they shared and how they um, connected with their audience. And then once I got to a point where I felt like that person might be right for our brand, then I reached out to them via DM, 
sometimes email, sometimes both, um, and just told them a little bit about the brand that we were interested in collaborating with them or whatever it was that we were collaborating with them for. So we most of the time we collaborated with uh, influencers for like in store act act in store events and things like that. But um, social media is where it's at. That's where all the influencers are. I want to I wanna work with a semi-famous person for my boutique, but um, I haven't really did any research in that area. Um, yes, I caught you on live and not the replay. Hey, Angel. <laughs> how do you know how much to pay yourself on your boutique sales? So um, I talked about this in the last video. Um, so currently, like I said, I have multiple streams of income and my boutique is still growing. So all of my revenue for my boutique, I put back into my boutique, um, because I want to have consistent, um, inventory coming in. I don't want that to ever slow up. So, um, all of my money for my boutique, I put back into the boutique, but as far as all my other streams of, um, revenue, I basically just look at my sales over the course of two weeks or, or so, um, I pay my, pay all the bills that are within that particular time frame, And then what, whatever is left over, I pay myself half of that, half of what's left. And then the other half goes into my savings. I'm working on my second while I'm working on rebranding my first business. My only issue with the second is finding a location where the rent isn't four grand. What, um, second, business are you working on is it um another boutique or what type of business is it where do you think are good spots for pop-ups um i mean there's various places so where i live in st louis a lot of people do pop-ups in um like they're like open event spaces basically so most of the most of my friends who uh host pop-up shops and things like that they just google um event space for rent in our city and things like that um, and just reach out to them to see if they offer or are capable of allowing you to rent their, their space out. There are some places that won't allow you to um, utilize their space for like things, events that are providing sales. Um, so keep that in mind as you're reaching out to places about pop-up shops. But um yeah, uh, some of the places I've seen people do pop-ups are like open event spaces in like hotels, um, things like that. I'm trying to think of where all the pop-up shops I've done were. They've all been in like event spaces actually, yeah. So I would just recommend Googling event spaces uh, for rent near you. How do you keep your keep organized as a boutique owner? What are the systems that help you with this process? Um, so. I'm generally an organized person. So like, for instance, all my inventory or my current inventory. So my fall and a bit of my summer is hanging up over there. And then behind there, there's a bunch of bins that are divided by category. Um, and each bin, each bin has a different something in it. Um, so that's kind of how I keep my inventory Um organized but as far as like my invoices and things like that i have a file system that's down underneath my desk where i'm sitting um that's folders that i keep all of my invoices in um i have receipts for um anything that i purchased in regards to my boutique um in my emails i create folders for invoices by the months so each month that i am placing orders i'm putting the invoices into a particular into the corresponding folder for that month. Um, all my invoices for like my current uh, collections or anything that's currently on my website are sitting right here on my desk. I leave those together. Um, I actually just made a, a vlog earlier. Somebody told me I should vlog. So I made a vlog, but in the vlog, I talk about like how I keep all my invoices together. So I usually staple together all the invoices that represent items that I put on my site at one particular time. So everything in this stack are items that I put on my site on August 26th. Um, and then the next stack is everything I put on there on September 6th. And then the next stack is everything that's gonna go on there on October 1st. So not. Um, I also have this little, you guys probably can't see it. Let me see. 
No, not really. There's a little like cabinet situation right next to my desk that I keep all of my like packaging materials in. So there's like four drawers and the top drawer has these little clear baggies that I use to put my items in when I'm shipping them. They're just little clear bags. Um, the next drawer has my poly mailers and then the little postcards that I insert with all my orders are in there. Underneath that drawer or just some empty, I mean, some um, unused notepads. I have some, um, some what are they called? Some blank thank you notes because I used to write handwritten thank you notes. Um, and then a box of my business cards are in there. And then the bottom drawer, I think it's just like stationary stuff, pens and whatnot. But that's about all that goes into my, my organ, organization. A beauty supply store. I already found a perfect location, but the rent was not in my budget and I'm not willing to change my budget. Well, yeah, I would definitely say stay within your budget, especially if you have one. Um, but yeah, well, good luck with the with the beauty supply store. Are there lots of beauty supply stores where you're located? Is it going to be high competition for you? Where I live, there's tons of beauty supply stores, so. I wrote down some notes I think to talk about, but I think I um I feel like I, I talked about them all. Yeah. I have to be realistic. Yeah, definitely want to be realistic. I don't recommend anyone doing if you don't think that it is feasible for you to do something, I wouldn't recommend that you do it. Um if there's like an ounce of self-doubt. I wouldn't recommend it personally. Personally. Love your hair. Thank you. I changed my hair. I change I try to change my hair like with the season. So this is my my fall, I guess you could say. My fall hair. <laughs> the location I found I would be the only store around a bunch of hair, barbershop, and nail shop. Oh, okay. Yeah, that sounds smart. That sounds pretty darn smart. Um, so if anybody is on my email list, you know that I sent out an email today and there was like all types of deals in there. So, um, along with what I was talking about earlier with people needing different types of, um, basically I discounted all the help that I could provide. Um, and then I just allow people to decide which type of help would work best for them. So I'm just going to put the link in the, um, in the chat box and you guys can check it out if you are interested. Last time you said you use Privy for pop-up email service. Have you tried their email service? If not, what do you use for your newsletters? I use MailerLite for all of that. I use MailerLite for my pop-ups and for my emails. That's the only thing I use. Oh, look at that. Speaking of email, I'm on your mailing list and I observed that you use MailerLite for email newsletter. Can you do a play-by-play -play video of how you create forms or process on MailerLite? Sure. I love MailerLite. It's super cool. It's really easy to use. I've been using it for about three years, maybe, and I love it. I used, um, I was using MailChimp when I first launched my boutique. And I was using Mailer Light for my personal website. And then when I switched my boutique, um, I don't think it's easy. <laughs> okay, well, I will definitely make a video about it. Um, but yeah, I switched when I switched my um, website to Shopify, I just switched my emails from MailChimp to Mailer Light. I have it, but curveball. I got you. I'll definitely make a video. I wish I could share my screen on. Um, on this live, but this version of live doesn't allow me to do that, unfortunately. Because then I could just show you. You're welcome. I'll definitely do that for you. I'll make it when I get off of here. <laughs> it'll be a it'll be an easy one for me to do. Anybody else got any questions? How is business going for everybody? Anybody um, struggling with anything? 
Does MailAlert connect to Facebook ads like MailChimp does? I am not sure. I've actually never dabbled with connecting uh, the ads with MailChimp. I have to check on that. Let me write that down to look when I make this video. Facebook ads connect to MailAlert. I've never even thought about it. I actually I never dabbled with it with MailChimp either. So. Not sure. How do you segment your list? Um, MailerLite automatically automatically segments them for me. Excuse me. So I believe it has it segmented by. Let me see if I can log into it on the side over here. Um, I believe it segments them by people who have first time customers, people who have spent over a certain amount. People who have made a certain number of orders, um, people who are only signed up for receiving emails, and I feel like I'm forgetting one. I don't know what it is, but basically, um, MailerLite segmented them for me, and then I just I didn't touch it. I just let it be what it was. Automatically. <laughs> I'm shopping for a new email pop-up service. So pardon all the questions. Is mail like download purchase history data uh, from MailChimp? Yes. So, oh, shoot. I almost just messed up this whole screen, y'all. Okay, let me see. Um, Darn it. I thought I was logging into that, but apparently not. I want to double check. Because whenever I... um, Whenever I downloaded my um, emails from MailChimp and then I uploaded them into MailerLite. It let me select which um, columns that I wanted to transfer over, but I feel like it didn't record the actual sales, like the, the amount of money that um, people had spent, but I was able to just download that information onto a spreadsheet, which I kept. I believe that's what it was. I'm struggling with sales. What are you currently doing to promote your business and market your business? It all starts with marketing. I literally, so I, I'm, I've been working on like all these um, blog posts and stuff that I want to write. So I have like a whole notebook full of topics. And there was one page I was reading earlier that was about marketing. And what did it say? What did I write down? Boom, boom, boom. I have so many notes in here. It's ridiculous. It's so basically, so I wrote down like the basically the aim of marketing is to know the customer so well that the product sells itself. So that's usually the issue that most people have with um, sales and marketing is that they think they know the customer, but they really don't. And uh, sometimes it's that they know who they want to target, but they're not communicating with them well. So um, I would say usually it's, it's your marketing that's off, which is preventing you from making sales. Thank you for being so helpful. My struggle has been marketing to my, oh, look at that, marketing <laughs> marketing into my target audience, especially not having a continuous budget for ads on IG and Facebook. So it's definitely possible to market to people on um, Instagram and Facebook, but without using ads, um, it's just a matter of kind of knowing where, where they are and where they spend their time on uh, those platforms. Well, on on Facebook more so, let's say. Uh, with Instagram, it's more about knowing what types of things they post about and utilizing hashtags um, to find them is typically how to go about finding your audience on um, Instagram. Most people um, utilize really generic hashtags and they only use like four. Um, when, ha when Instagram allows you to use 30, you can use up to 30 hashtags per, per, per post. So I literally keep a list of hashtags saved or six different lists of 30 hashtags. So there's 30 hashtags on each list. Um, and I play around with those hashtags over time just to see which group is working best. And um, 
I utilize that space, all 30 of those hashtag spots I use in order to reach as many people as I possibly can every time I post something. What do you mean by communicating? So whenever you post anything, you share anything on your social media, on your website, as you're writing your product descriptions, they should all speak to a specific person. So um, again, going back to like your captions and hashtags and things like that. So let's speak about hashtags. I mean, not hashtags, captions. So usually what, what I see a lot is that um, people share very generic captions. Uh, they tell people to do things like click the link in my bio and we just got this new dress in, check it out on our site and things like that. Instead of being conversational and saying something that will resonate with the person and, and cause them to want to um, click the link in your bio to visit your site or to check out what it, whatever it is that you're promoting in your um, in your post. And also, some people are too sales driven, driven, driven. So every post that you share on your social media does not have to be sales related. You do not have to post everything that you post online does not have to be with the goal to make a sale. You want to make sure that you're resonating with um, an audience and providing value uh, to them however you can um, or however possible. And you don't always have to be trying to get them to spend some money. So when I say communicate, I mean basically like what are you saying and how are you saying it to them? Um, every Anybody can post, you know, Click the link in our bio. We just got new dresses in. They're fifty percent off today. I could go. I could go to H and M's website, Zara, Forever Twenty One. All those people who I know have reputable businesses that I that I can trust because I've shopped with them before, and you know they're. I know that they're legitimate. They built up a certain level of. Um, trust with their audience where they don't have to say much in order to get a person to take action versus us small business owners new business owners everything that you say in regards to your business and in regards to your products is going to have an effect on your business and how people perceive your brand so you want to make sure that everything that you share and how you communicate uh and share your brand with your target audience you want to make sure that you're um intentional with everything that you share and everything that you say and that it resonates with them. Hopefully that makes sense. Can you share those hashtags? So my hashtags are written based on the audience that I'm serving. So it's not just like a random list of hashtags. It's literally I've taken time to research my audience and the, tar the customers that I am targeting and develop hashtag groups that I think would resonate with them. No, they're not secret hashtags or anything like that. It's literally just terms and words that I think resonate with my audience and that I believe that my audience utilizes with their own posts. Um, any ideas for building hype before launch? I think I just wrote a whole, well, almost a whole blog post literally about building hype before you launch. So everybody's watching this live is basically going to get, I actually, I think I was going to make a mini course about it, possibly. That's so funny. So the very first first thing written right there is build hype early. That's so funny that you asked this question. Um, let's see if I can sum up what's on this page. Mm -mm -mm. So basically I said, don't wait until you launch to start marketing. Make it a big deal. Um, so I keep seeing like this thing online that says like make it like a uh, think about how I how uh, Apple releases an iPhone. So like they make it a huge deal. You see it posted everywhere. They have like a whole event around uh, the launch of an iPhone. So you want to make it a big deal. Um, so for me, when I was trying to build hype around my launch, uh, I was just posting about it all the time. Just posting about it. My my captions and. Uh, statuses on Facebook and stuff literally exuded excitement like and I was like get excited get excited like telling people get excited share share with your girlfriend share with your boyfriend share with your cousin your mama your sister your daddy whoever like 
I posted consistently and I I made sure that I sounded excited about it so that other people could get excited about it. Um, so for, I would say first and foremost, it starts with being, being consistent um, and deciding like what your brand voice is going to be, what your brand tone is going to be um, and how you want to present your brand uh, before people are even able to see, you know, what your website looks like or all of the products that you're going to be having. Uh, you got to make sure that like your overall branding is in place um, and that you have a brand voice and brand tone uh, in place. So um, some of the things you can do are, let's see what I wrote here. Run a contest. Um, you definitely want to try to build your email list early. So a lot of people neglect to build their email list early. Uh, you definitely want to have a landing page up to start collecting emails. And you want to give people a reason to sign up for the email. So whether that is that they are going to get access to your website a week before the general public does. Or maybe they're going to get an exclusive discount that they can use on um, the entire site the first day that you launch that nobody else is going to get. Um, things like that. And then uh, for run a contest, I said you can, um, let's see what I got here. So if you're already sharing products and giving like sneak peeks of products, you can run a contest where you're asking people to tell you which items are their favorites and they could be entered to win a gift card or entered to win an item for free. Um, you want to make sure that they're, if you do a giveaway that it's like that you have a goal in mind or that it's profitable. Um, so typically the only expense involved with doing a giveaway is just the item that you decide to give away or items. If it is an item, but you want to make sure you have goals in place as far as like what you want to achieve from the giveaway. So like I just did a contest last weekend. That was my first time doing a contest. And, um, my goal wasn't necessarily to make sales because I, I knew that people were going to be entering the contest and more than likely they weren't going to purchase anything because they were waiting to see if they were going to win a gift card. So my contest was I was giving away a hundred dollars worth of free clothing. So basically I just gave them a hundred dollar gift card. Um, so, but the rules of the contest were that they had to share uh, my post on their page. They had to comment underneath the post to tell me, what their favorite item on the site was and they had to be following our page and like the post i think it was so my goals for um that contest were to drive traffic to my site because i have facebook pixel installed on my site and i knew that the pixel was going to record all of the traffic that was being driven to my site i knew the traffic would be driven to my site because they had to comment and tell me what item uh was their favorite and so uh, that was driving traffic to my site and Facebook was um, collecting that data for me so I can use that data to retarget them down the line and run an ad to bring them back. Um, I want them to like, share and comment on the post because that would uh, increase the engagement on that post, which would uh, push my post to be seen by more people on Instagram. So I think I ended up with and I ran that uh, post as an ad as well, which also increased my engagement. So my goals for that giveaway weren't monetary. My goals were to increase traffic to my site, to grow my pixels data, to increase my engagement on that post and um, things like that. So uh, long story short, you kind of have to like think of creative ways to generate excitement, honestly, uh, whether that be getting people to sign up for your email list because you're giving them something exclusive, running a contest, offering discounts. You can blog. Something is falling in that closet. You can uh, start a blog where you're blogging leading up to your um, your launch. I, I recommend blog blogging a lot. Um, a lot of people really like downplay blogging, but it's super helpful, um, especially to people who sell things online. Um, what else did I write? I mean, that's really the gist of it, honestly. Hello, I have a question. How long did it take to make your first sale? How do I improve my sales? I made my first sale on the day that I launched. Um, how do I improve sales? You improve your sales by 
being very clear on who your target audience is, making sure you're communicating with that target audience in a way that benefits them and resonates with them, being consistent in uh, the work that you do in regards to your business, um, providing value and providing good quality uh, content. So making sure your pictures are popping, your styling, your merchandise, um, your editing, your photos, um, your captions are on point. Honestly, it takes consistency and hard work. I mean, it's really not much more that I can explain. There's no secret formula or anything along those lines. It's really just being consistent and knowing uh, who it is that you're targeting and being uh, effective in communicating with them and getting them to resonate with what you have to offer. Oh, you saw my giveaway? Few people said they saw um, my ad. As a new boutique owner just about to launch, what would be the ideal goal or goals that this owner should set? Um, I would say you definitely should set a monetary goal for yourself. I would personally say it's unrealistic for you to um, have the goal of selling out of all your merchandise within you know your first week or your first month. Um, I personally think that's unrealistic. So I would just say definitely set a monetary goal for yourself um, weekly or do it by the day. Um, I don't think I have it written down in here. I had like a um, calendar written down somewhere that I use as a template for my boutique course. Um, but I would definitely say set a monetary goal for yourself. Um, but don't let the monetary part of it be like your only uh like driving factor because that can leave you very disappointed so for me uh i set a monetary goal for myself but i set a really realistic one for myself um so that if i exceeded that monetary goal i could have something to be super excited about um but i also set like social media goals for myself email marketing goals so like getting a certain number of emails collected by the by the end of a month um, having a certain number of followers by the end of the week or by the end of the month, things like that. So I gave myself multiple goals so that I could still have something to be proud of myself for, um, even before, if I didn't accomplish one, hopefully there was another one of that list of goals that I accomplished. How do you overcome doubt and trying to perfect everything before you launch? Honestly, I'm a perfectionist. I can be like a super perfectionist. Like if you can see that rack over there, like there's no reason that it needs to be merchandised beautifully like it's in a store. But I literally sat and like tediously organized it. Um, so it's not easy. Um, I just had to get to a point where I gave myself grace and was and, and reminded myself that I am a human and nothing in this life is perfect. So like before I launched, um, obviously I wanted everything to be perfect. And once I was approaching the date that I wanted to launch, um, well, I surpassed the date that I initially wanted to launch. So when I did launch, it was beyond the date I actually wanted to launch. So when that second launch day came around and there were still things that I haven't hadn't accomplished, I sat down and wrote a list of all the things that I hadn't accomplished yet in regards to what I wanted to accomplish leading up to my launch. And I just checked off the things that I felt like weren't absolutely necessary for me to have um, when I launched. Like I pay, I, I tried to pick or eliminate things that wouldn't make a difference if I had it or if I didn't have it. And so what did I not do? I think, so I wanted, um, oh, I thought this was on. I wanted um, custom poly mailers. And what else did I want? I wanted my little cards, these little cards that I put in with all my orders. And there was something else. There was like three things that were holding me back from launching because I couldn't decide what I wanted them to look like. Well, I couldn't couldn't decide what colors I wanted them to be. All types of like tedious little things. And so I told myself that um, I couldn't let those three small things hold me back from moving forward and launching the business. And so I decided that I would work on those three things further into my business after I had made money. Um, 
in the business. And I also analyzed how much money I had spent thus far uh, prior to the launch. So honestly, I just sat down and wrote a list of like what was holding me back and uh, made a decision to hold off on some things until late a later date. Because otherwise, we'll be waiting forever trying to get things perfect, <sighs> unfortunately. What's your unique selling point? What sets you apart from other boutiques? I'm working on the work. Oh, look at you. Um, so for me, my unique selling point is that I want to sell or that I sell uh, items that aren't too trendy, but are trendy enough that you can pair them with items that are already in your closet and that you can um, mix and match them with other things that we have in our collection and that they won't be out of season next year. So like um, in comparison to other boutiques, there are a lot of them that sell those super trendy pieces that you know are only going to be alive for, you know, this season and next year, some if they wore it outside, somebody would tell them that they look tacky. So um, I focus on not selling the overly trendy pieces and and instead selling pieces that are conventional but still stand out and that they can pair with things that they already own, that they can mix and match with other things from our collection and that they can um, wear from season to season and from year to year. Do you use an app to keep track of sales and inventory? No, I don't. I mean, I use uh, the Shop Shopify to keep track of my sales and inventory, but I keep track of um, my sales and inventory through just like a um, Excel document or Google Sheets is what I use, which is essentially the same thing as Excel. Do you write your own email and your own content? Yes, I do. I honestly just use um, emails that I receive as inspiration. So um, if you're anything like me, you get emails from companies like Forever 21 and H&M and everybody else under the sun. I get them all day long. So when I see one that I like or I like the layout of it, I favorite it or star, put a star on it or whatever um, in my inbox. And then I use those as inspiration as I'm um, creating my own emails. But for the most part, I, I make my emails pretty um, straight to the point, I guess you could say. Let me see if I can find one. I try not to make them look too fancy or include too many words because um, one of the things I like about MailerLite is it tells me like what percentage of my email people actually read. So it'll say 50% of your subscribers read this far and 20% read this far and 5% read this far. So it gives me an idea of like how much um, content to put in all my emails. Cause sometimes I was, I was overdoing it. So um, yeah. So I just sent one out today. This is what it looks like. Whoop. So um, it's just my logo. What this, this email is about. And then it has, some of the items that are included in that sale and that's it there's no like fancy words whole paragraphs or anything like that it's like we having a sale this is what's included here's some pictures click the button that's it custom poly mail is chance really <laughs> Glad you pushed forward regardless. That's what I love about you. You're very persistent and can switch this easily. Thank you. That's one of the things I love about myself too. <laughs> Thank you so much. I really need to hear that. I'm going to write my list and get those things checked off. Yes, do it. Hey, Jans, how many multiple streams of income do you have? I'm late signing in. Do you have a storefront also? No. So I'm only online and I have eight streams of income currently. <laughs> When I, I just participated in a um, in a uh, event on Sunday with other entrepreneurs, and I couldn't remember how many streams of income I had. I was like, "This is like partially embarrassing, but not at the same time because I have a lot of them." So yeah, I have eight. Um, yep. Dun, dun, dun. Went to start about six months ago. 
But due to a medical condition and treatments, everything slowed down for me. Oh, no. I'm sorry to hear that. Darn. Well, you know, pick it back up when you're, when you're capable of doing so. You want to make sure you're in the best of health. You definitely want to make sure you're in the best of health going into entrepreneurship. Oh, I laugh because I'm often crying. And when I think about all the crying, it makes me laugh. But I would definitely say you definitely want to be in the best of health. How do you get your email address? My Like my business email address? Um, I got my business email address through GoDaddy. But it's through... I bought it on GoDaddy's website, but the platform that my email is through is um, Microsoft Office and Outlook. My target customers will be more of the plus size clothes and some accessories. Gotcha. Plus size is so hard. Good plus size merchandise is so hard. I'm waiting to launch because my first shipment hasn't arrived. When's it supposed to arrive? And what's your, do you have a, a launch date in mind? Is it holding up your launch date? So in my vlog that I did today, I recorded a vlog for anybody that <laughs> logged in late. Um, a couple of people recommended that I create a vlog or record a vlog because usually I'm just sitting, you know, in front of the camera teaching something. So, um, Somebody said I should do like a day in the life of a boutique owner video. And I was like, okay. So it's not really like a whole day. It's just like a portion of my day. But anyway, I recorded a vlog. I need to finish editing it. And I'll probably put it up either later tonight or um, tomorrow. But in the video, I, I, rece I actually received a package like right in the middle of it. And um, I went through like, I tried them on. I shared the vendor. Um... I went through pricing and like how I manage all my profit margins and my promotions and all that. So you get to see all that in the um, vlog that I'm going to upload soon. You're very good at creating stuff. Thank you. I've always been pretty creative, thankfully. Um, I, I think was it maybe like two days ago, I was telling everybody that when I was younger, when my mom wanted to get rid of me or like... Um, like get rid of me basically she would tell me to go make something so i would go make stuff <laughs> see based on the boutiques you work you've worked with and worked in what would you say is the most ideal day and time to launch a boutique i would say definitely on a friday um because people get paid on fridays um so any day that is money related is always a great day um but more so like there's i wouldn't even say it's uh that the day of the week is most important i would say more so the time of the year is a, a better thing to think about so um spring is not the greatest time to launch a boutique um i would say fall and winter are typically better uh times to launch a boutique because in the fall, people start shopping for like back to school and things like that. Not necessarily that your boutique has to sell back to school related things, but people automatically go into like shopping mode when fall time comes around. I don't know why, um, except for the back to school situation. And then obviously like winter months, especially around like um, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, things like that, because people are in a shopping mood uh spring and summer are like kind of just up in the air uh if you're gonna launch in the spring you want to do it around tax time uh because again people have money um summer just isn't the greatest time to launch personally i don't think so um and also it's the same in uh like when i worked in retail like worked in actual stores summer would start start off strong and we would get a lot of sales and then towards the middle and end sales would kind of um die down and the same in spring uh and i felt like spring was kind of just off especially around here where i live because our springs are just weird sometimes they're super rainy sometimes they're still super cold and it feels like winter uh sometimes around here we it's almost like we skip spring and go straight into summer so um Fall and winter are usually pretty consistent weather weather wise and things of that nature so 
Yeah. You skipped my question. Oh, no. How did I do that? Okay, let me scroll back up and see if I see it. Poised. How did I do that? Where is it? Okay, type it again. I don't see it. I just see your your first comment when you say you read bingo. <laughs> Let me know what your question was. I'm sorry. I don't see it. I was hoping for next week because I ordered my pieces 9-8 and I'm still waiting. Oh, darn. What's it? Today is 9-19. Jesus. Where are they coming from? Are they coming for L from L.A.? At 7.50. It doesn't show me what time everybody commented. It just says everybody's name. But I don't see your comment anywhere. I'm scrolling up again to see if I see it. Did you say where you're located? I'm in St. Louis. I live in St. Louis, Missouri. Right smack dab in the middle of the country. Hey, Jans. How long did it take you to meet your projected earning goals? How many pieces did you buy before you launched? Ooh, um, so I launched with, I believe... 20, it was either 22 or 26 styles. So I had a lot of inventory when I first launched. Um, and at this point, so this is, it'll, it'll be a year next month. No, not next month. In November. November 8th will make um, a year for um, my boutique. And I still have, I think, five pieces. No, three pieces. I sold two. I still have three pieces left from my initial launch collection. Um, but as far as making my projected earning goals, it took me November, December, January, March. I would say around March was when I made an amount that I was like proud of, that I was excited about. I was excited just in general that people were buying merchandise from me. But um, I would say around March. So remember December, January, February. Oh, crap. There is a huge spider outside this window. At least he's outside, though. But I would say it was about March <laughs> when um, I made uh, the amount of money that I was happy about. I'm checking now. And my package is coming from Shanghai. Oh, yeah. Packages coming from China can definitely take some time for sure. That I feel like that's one of the only downfall or not only, but one of the biggest downfalls from ordering uh, overseas is that there are huge shipping delays. Some vendors over there are very quick with their shipping, but a number of them are not quick at all. You skipped my question too. Oh, dang. How did I skip that? I'm sorry, guys. Um, did you manually pick a winner for your giveaway or did you use the software? If you use the software, what software? I manually pick one. So, okay. So, when I picked my um, my my winner, I also did that strategically as well because I wanted it to be someone who I felt like, one, would look cute in, in my merchandise. Two, I wanted it to be someone who had a bit of a nice following and three, I wanted to be somebody who actually posted content that um, I felt might resonate with my audience. So, um, and, and not to say that she has an obligation to post that she got this uh, merchandise from me or post or share or tag me when she decides to wear what she gets or anything like that. But my hope is that she will. And uh, I feel like the audience that she has will resonate and, and coincide well with the audience that I serve. So I picked it randomly. I literally went through like almost every single person that um, entered the contest and I chose this one person. <laughs> Definitely have to find a different vendor. Yeah, you gotta find some different vendors. Vendors. There is not one um, 
there is not one vendor that I have shot with that I love, like every single piece that they have or that I shop with consistently. I have shot with, I don't even know how many vendors. Like I have literal folders full of um, invoices and they are all from, these are all invoices and they're all from different vendors that I've shopped with. There's some vendors that I shop with one time and never again. <laughs> There's vendors that I've shopped with 10 times. There's vendors that I've only bought one item from here and there. And then there's vendors that I buy like 10 pieces at a time from. So you got to you got to have like a little black book of vendors. Wow. Five months. That's definitely something to be proud of. Thank you. I didn't know if I should be proud or if I should be like, dang, that took too long. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> It definitely, it was hard work though. Like I, and I definitely could see a difference in my sales. Even now I can see a difference in my sales and the success that I have in my business based on my level of work and consistency. So like I probably had two months or so where I didn't post consistently. I was posting like here and there once and twice in a week, um, things like that. And I think I just, I, it probably was around like May and June, probably maybe. I don't know. I lost like so much motivation at some point during this this year. And uh, even with my YouTube videos, like I kind of fell off and um, I and I definitely noticed the drop in sales. So uh, I noticed that when I was consistent and I was uh, intentional in the type of content that I was creating, I definitely saw great results in um my boutique. So like, for instance, when I launched, I, I made like tons of little promo videos and I did like styling videos and uh, I made like episodes of like style videos for IGTV and all of that. Like I was really intentional with the content that I was sharing. But as the months went on, I don't know what happened. I just kind of fell off the face of the earth and so did my sales. So um, definitely consistency definitely is key, especially in business. I'm searching for more vendors, but I don't have a seller's permit. Why don't you have a seller's permit yet? Depending, I, I want to say it's probably free. Where I'm from, the seller's permit was free. What's holding you back from getting your seller's permit? Is six styles too little to launch uh, a pre-launch, maybe? You can definitely do a pre-launch just like, as like a tester collection, but I definitely don't think it is um, not enough. Uh, six styles can definitely work and six styles that correlate with one another could definitely, definitely work. So think of it like as I don't know if you've ever heard of um, a capsule collection. So um, at like various stores that I've worked, worked at, they would release like a small collection of items that all paired together, basically, that built kind of like a mini wardrobe or that were things that... Um, you know, that would go well with either something that they already sold or something that the people probably already um, owned. So nine times out of 10, typically a capsule co capsule collection is just a mini collection of items that coincide kind of with one another. So think of it like that. Six items could definitely work. I'm loving these jewels. Thank you so much. Thank you. I be trying. <laughs> Y'all be keeping me on my toes with these questions. I always tell my best friend, I'm like, I, I some days I'm amazed at the answers that I have. Sometimes I just literally have to like think and sit and, and sit and think. And I'm like, I, I didn't know I knew that. <laughs> the company I work at does that monthly now, in addition to our quarterly launch. Oh, see, yeah. What uh, company do you work for? If you don't mind me asking. Yes, as time went on, you were doing a milli and became inconsistent and I got worried, but you're back and I'm loving it. Thank you. Yeah, there was a lot of people that were worried. I, I, so I'll be honest, this, we are, I, these, these videos take me all over like across topics, but I went through like a very huge bout of um, depression this year and it didn't have anything to do with the business per se it was more so like everything that was happening around the business so like my friends and family and things like that like 
Um, being a full time entrepreneur, I spend a lot of time alone. So I come from a background where I worked in a store. So I saw people constantly all day, every day. I was always communicating with people. Not to say that I don't communicate with people all the time. Like I'm talking to you guys and I make the videos and all that. But it's not the same as like one on one in person interaction. So uh, I was like drained of energy but also drained because I wasn't doing anything. I was like sitting in the same space all the time. And then I had like friends telling me that like I had changed or that they didn't see me as much anymore. And they just didn't understand like what I was doing or why I spent so much time working on my business. Like one of my friends said the other day and I wanted to hit her, but I'm not, I'm a nonviolent individual, but she was like, um, well, yeah, it's been a year. So I don't understand like what the problem is now. And I'm like, just because it's been a year doesn't mean that it's easier now. Like it's still hard. The, actually, I feel like the more your business grows, the, the more hard it gets. Um, so long story short, I went through a lot of ups and downs, relationships and friendships changing and not knowing how to deal with not being able to interact with people all day because that was what I was used to. And yeah, so that's been my, my year. <laughs> I work for Stella and Dot. It's an apparel company. I've heard of Stella and Dot. That's cool. I'm in Georgia. I'm just getting started and I need to hurry and get my sales permit. Yes, girl, get it. You have other marketing tips for new boutique owners. Um, I always say like get out of get get out of the mindset that um social media is your own only way to market. Because it's definitely not. I think a lot of people uh neglect the power of word of mouth and also print materials so for instance at the apartment building that i live at they have a bulletin board downstairs where our mailboxes are you best believe i'm slapping up a, a flyer up there that says shop my boutique visit my website it doesn't have my apartment number on it because i don't want nobody coming knocking at the door although they could if they wanted to try on something because i do believe that if you can get somebody to try something on they're more likely to buy it however I say that to say, um, don't neglect the power of word of mouth, of printing actual flyers and promotional materials and hanging them up and passing them out, uh, leaving your um, promotional materials wherever they will allow. So like the nail salon that I go to near my mom's house lets people put um, business cards up at their desk. And then, you know, at the station where you dry your nails or put your toes underneath the thing to dry, they let you sit um business cards and stuff up there so last time when i got my nails done i stick, stuck my business card up there um you are also your greatest marketing tool so wearing your merchandise wherever you go or whenever you get the chance to do so um you're you literally become a walking marketing tool a walking model for your business so word of mouth more print materials leaving your uh business card or any type of cards to like these little cards that I, I put I put these in my in with all of my orders, but I also leave these wherever I am allowed to leave them. Um, and wearing your merchandise. If you don't mind me asking, what was your startup budget? So when I first launched, I didn't really have a budget per se. I had a number of items that I wanted to start with. Um, so my initial number of, or not items, styles was 20, but I ended up, I can't remember if it was 22 or 26. And so um, I chose a number of styles versus a number or a, a, a monetary number. I should have chosen a monetary number. Um, and that's what I recommend that everybody does at this point. But for me, I chose a number of styles. I just resigned from a contract job to work from home so I can become a full-time entrepreneur. Congratulations. Welcome to my world. <laughs> How do you feel about giveaways like t-shirts and totes with your logo? I got lots of questions. I think giveaways are cool. I just ran my first giveaway. Um, mine wasn't a, a toter or a, um, or a t-shirt. I gave away a, a hundred dollar gift card. Um, and what's funny is sometimes you give away gift cards and people don't even use them, honestly. So um, 
it's not like you lost or gained anything in that in that aspect. But anyway, long story short, uh, I think giveaways are great as long as you always have an intention and a goal behind what you're doing with the giveaway. So I don't know if you were just if you were on when I just talked about the giveaway that I did. But my goal wasn't to make money at all. My goal was to drive more traffic to my site, to uh, increase the engagement on my Instagram profile because I had people sharing and people commenting on that one particular post. And um, I wanted my pixel, my Facebook pixel that's on my website to uh, pick up all that data from all the people that were visiting my site. So run some giveaways, girl. I understand the challenges when you're trying to chase your dreams. I work a full time job. and When I get off work, I stay in the parking lot and work on business till seven at night. Wow. See, that's dedication. But see that. I, and I feel like that's the thing that sets people, entrepreneurs, and people who are going to succeed at entrepreneurship apart from those who would never succeed or those who just want to su succeed without putting the work into succeeding. So, um, yeah, I know a few people like that. They they have things that they want to accomplish, but they don't want to do the work. They spend their time. They have free time that they can utilize uh, working on their business. And instead, they choose to go, you know, out drinking with their friends and go to the club and be out every weekend. Every free moment that they get, they use that to do something else and start instead of using that free moment to work on the business when they have a chance to do so. So I applaud you for that. That's amazing. Sometimes later, but I'm. I've learned you're the only one that can create what belongs to you. Exactly. Amen. People will turn their nose up, avoid you, cuss you out, and belittle you. But we can't let it phase us. Vibes can kill, but I can kill vibes. Oh, I like that. Vibes can kill, but I kill vibes. I love that. Oh, my God. You're definitely right, though. People will turn their nose up. Like, I couldn't believe how my, like, the, the, the dynamics of the relationships that I've had with people for years, like I'm talking like 20 years, I can believe how they changed so quickly. And it was all based on the fact that I had started something for myself, that I was literally living a dream, accomplishing so many great things. And yet people had complaints and I was doing something wrong. I was like, wow. So you're definitely right, but I love that vibes can kill, but I kill vibes. I want to walk, write that on my wall or something. <laughs> you have answered this question. How much was the start? Of, how much was the start of your first inventory when you opened your online boutique? I think I spent twenty six hundred dollars on my um, first collection when I launched. I spent over two thousand dollars from when I launched my boutique. It was a lot. I went to Magic um, that August and I ordered some merchandise while I was there. And I used that as an opportunity to, well, I had already been buying for my previous job. So I was already familiar with a lot of the brands that were out there. Um, but I was, I had always gone to Magic with the intent to shop for my old job. So that was the first time I went with the intention to shop for my own business. And so I, I was looking for something totally different. So I use that as an opportunity to get to know uh, new brands. And then once I came home, because uh, I played some artists while I was there. And then once I came home, I kind of form formulated um, a collection or idea for what I wanted my collection to look like. And I did some more buying. What do you use to build your collections besides Pinterest? That's about it. Other than in my head. Um, when I'm on Fashion Go, I favored a lot of things uh, that I like. So I'm, I try not to be an impulse buyer. Um, so I usually favorite things that I like throughout the week or whenever it is that I'm looking. And then I go back to it about a week later um, and look at all of the pieces that I um, favored it during that, that point of time to see if there were, were kind of like... Um, reoccurring things or reoccurring colors, uh, prints and things like that. And so uh, I use that kind of as inspiration for what to uh, buy. So like if you look at my, I don't know if you guys can see it, but if you look at that, this collection on this first bar, uh, there's lots of like snake prints and leopard prints, but in like different colors and different size prints. So 
I have um, leopard print biker shorts, and then I have leopard print pants, uh, but they're like two different tones of color and two different size leopard prints. And I got snake print uh, biker shorts, snake print dress, but they're two totally different tones again. Um, there's leopard print here, different tone of leopard print, different tone of leopard print, and then there's reoccurring colors. So tan, tan, that's not really tan, like cream <laughs> or off-white, somewhere in between there. But as you can see, they all coincide with one another, and then obviously like black is mixed in there. And then as you move further into fall, you have more of the like tones of green and things like that. So I just kind of look for like reoccurring things in the uh, types of merchandise and items that I'm looking at. I admire you for being transparent about your depression because we all go through tough times and our closest friend and family don't understand or support us. Trying to be better for ourselves. Exactly. It is hard, but you got to be better for yourself for sure. You're welcome, Valerie. I'm proud of you, and you are such an inspiration for me. I will get out of my fears and start vlogging my life, building my brand as an entrepreneur. Do it, yes, do it. I think it's it's amazing. Like you never know who is out there just waiting for you to create content. So, like when I started making uh, videos, I had no, I knew that there were people who were looking for content about boutiques, and I knew that there were other people making content about you know, having a boutique and launching one, but I had no idea that like people would listen to me talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Or that people would say, like, I literally have people say like, I like listening to you over so-and-so. Not that that matters to me, but I'm like, it, it, it matters to somebody. Like what I say matters to somebody versus them listening to somebody else. So you never know, like that could be a large group of individuals out there just waiting for you to create content. For your very first consultation, were you nervous or confident or a little bit of both? I would say a little bit of both. Um, at the point when I started offering consultations, I was already making the videos and posting on Instagram and things like that. And I was like, you know, commenting back to people and generally talking to strangers all day, I guess you could, you could say. So um, that one was like the first time I had to like talk to someone over the phone uh, and like they hear my voice and I hear their voice. Um, so yeah, there was definitely a little bit of nervousness there, but also confident because I had become more, um, I guess confident in, um, you know, just speaking to people and talking and sharing information. The first consultation I ever did was actually with a man, which was so ironic to me because I talked to women all day about starting boutiques and, this man reached out to me and he wanted to start an online boutique for women and um, he needed a website built and I helped him find merchandise and everything. So he was my very first paying client and it just so happened to be a man, which was crazy. So that alone was also a little bit not I, I want to say intimidating, intimidating, but I don't want to say intimidating at the same time because I'm not intimidated by men. But the fact that like I feel like the boutique industry is very female dominated, uh, the fact that a man wanted to talk to me about it just was like very interesting to me. So I'm hosting another webinar soon. I'm thinking in like two weeks, probably. And I, t I was taking a poll on my Instagram um, asking people what I should, what the topic of that webinar should be. So if anybody has any recommendations for what my next webinar should be about, let me know in the comments and I'll write it down. Because my last webinar, I think my last webinar I did was... Was that the one I did at the mall? So if, I don't know if anybody remembers that. I was supposed to do a webinar and like something, a bunch of things happened and went wrong that day. So I ended up just staying at the mall and um, used their Wi-Fi and did my webinar like right then and there. Yep, noisy. It was so noisy. Oh, my God. <laughs> 
yeah so anyway now i got an office space <laughs> and um yeah we can we can do a proper webinar this will be my third or fourth webinar now which is crazy i love this how far does your service go i like looking over website pages etc oh um so i do web i do website building i do um website audits and uh instagram audits and i do um 30 minute pick my brain conversation so like i have a lot, a lot of people that send me literal long list of questions in my emails and i'm like i'm not going to sit here and write out a response to every one of these emails i'd rather just have a phone conversation with you so um i have 30 minute pick my brain sessions where people can just they literally just email me the list of questions they book a time and we go through the questions and I answer them. And then I have a 60 minute strategy sessions where uh, we work through all of your goals, whatever issues you're working on or you're you're facing. And we work together to develop a strategy to help you improve. So email building, website audits, Instagram audits, uh, pick my brain sessions and boutique strategy sessions. Uh, uh, uh. Email marketing segmentation campaigns all in one. Got it. Email marketing segments. Email. A lot of people have been asking me about email marketing lately. So I feel like I'm definitely going to talk about that. Segmentations campaigns. Got it. I don't know if you answered this question. Is YouTube one of your eight streams of income? Yes. So it. Uh, YouTube was the first stream that I got outside of the job that I was working at the time. So after YouTube, I created an ebook, uh, which is on Amazon, uh, which is all about buying merchandise for your boutique. Then I created, um, vendor lists and workbooks. Then I started uh, offering consultations and uh, the websites building. Then what came after that? Courses. Um, I don't know what else I'm forgetting. Forgetting something. Oh, the, the audits. Um, my boutique, obviously. Um, there's something else I'm forgetting. I forget what else I'm forgetting. My sister's trying to FaceTime me. She doesn't want anything. I know it. So, yeah, I have, uh, yes, YouTube is one of my streams of income. Then in a cohesive collection for the webinar. Oh, that's a good one. One of my favorite topics, building collections. Y'all are going to put together my whole entire um the, all the contents for this webinar for me cohesive collections let me make sure i'm clear cohesive uh i'm picking the items naming them to photos maybe got it inventory management pricing profit and loss market markup another all in one okay whoo jesus okay um inventory <laughs> management Pricing, profit, and loss markup. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, uh. Your email is listed somewhere here, right? I'll type it in the bar. It's Jan at janschartay.com. Are the strategy sessions only for boutique businesses or are you doing other business ventures as well? For example, consulting businesses. I never thought about it. <laughs> I've never thought it was only supposed to be for boutique businesses, but I mean, I guess it could be for other businesses. I don't know if I'm capable of consulting another consulting business. 
just because my well I mean all of this is new for me I was gonna say because mine is so new but I don't know you always ask me questions that have me thinking like could I do that <laughs> How much do you charge for consultations? Um, so my 30 minute pick my brain sessions are $75 and my um, 60 minute strategy sessions are $197. But um, if you guys were on earlier, um, I was saying that on my email list all week, I've been sending out deals and coupons for all of my services and everything. So I'll put the link in the... Um, in the bar, hopefully it'll open. Um, the link to my all the deals that were in today's email, so you guys can see them. See all the ones from today. So I've been sending out different bits of. I'm doing seven days of tips basically, and um, I've been doing. I've been sending out tips and then corresponding. Um, promotions for products and services that go along with those tips all week. So I will put the link for all of that in the bar. We Capricorns, I can help it. We <laughs> Yes, I have a I have a really big number of Capricorns that follow me, which is so interesting to me. I'm like, I feel like I just resonate with Capricorns all day. It's crazy. I literally like on my birthday, my birthday is January 3rd. And on my birthday, there was so many girls that followed me. It was their birthday, too. I was like, what in the world? <laughs> it was so weird. Let's see. There you go again, flip flopping. I need your consistency, and I'm going to be a little selfish. So here I go. Do consulting for other things after I launch my boutique. Okay. <laughs> oh man. Christmas Eve. Oh, you're Christmas Eve. That means you get you get a lot of um gifts. Libra all day. Hey, Edward. Libra. Oh, man. My last like serious boyfriend was a Libra. My dad's a Libra. Uh, who else is a Libra in my family? Yeah, I love my daddy. He talks too much, though. Entirely too much. <laughs> so what else? What other questions you guys got this evening? Before I log off and go to sleep. No, I'm not going to go to sleep. I'm going to get a little bit more work done, and I'll probably work to like 8.30. And then, uh, yeah, in my Mortal Kombat voice, Scorpio wins October 31st. <laughs> oh, my gosh. No, that means people hit me with you want two gifts, and I respond, do because I can't wait for Christmas to give you yours. That's so funny. No, uh, my, youngest, my youngest sister, her birthday is the day after Christmas, so... That's, that's her life as well. Well, it was my life, too, when I was younger. Because uh, my birthday is, what, nine days after Christmas? So, yeah. Me and all my sisters are Capricorns. So, my mom, <laughs> my mom raised three Capricorns. And, um, yeah. It was quite the inter interesting dynamic among, amongst the three of us. <laughs> October 3rd. Yeah, my dad's birthday is October 6th. Oh, that means your birthday's coming up. Look at that. All right, guys. Well, if you don't have any more questions, I'm going to go ahead and log off. Hope you guys enjoyed this live. I'm going live more consistently, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> um, so, oh, 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 okay. How much do you need to launch? Uh, that number is subjective. There is no magic right or wrong number for a launch that's really up to you um there are the cost of registering your business uh your website platform costs the cost of um your merchandise any additional marketing materials that you might buy things like that so um the number is different for everybody how much do you charge to see what is wrong on the website? I'm, going, I'm getting the traffic, but no sales on there. It's $97. And uh, along with that, I um, 
basically provide you with um, advice for what to change or where you should improve, what things I notice that should change and things like that. I see you told hubby you're going live. He didn't call. Actually, I forgot to tell him I was going live. Usually, I you, I always remember to tell him that I'm going live, but usually he calls me to see if I'm still going live. And I'm like, but um, yeah, today I forgot to tell him. So I'm surprised that he hasn't called. <laughs> I have been feeling like I have to constantly do sales. I've been told my I've been told by family my prices are high. They are reasonable, although I know they will not be my biggest supporters. It does play in my mind. I can definitely understand that. I actually just posted uh this like meme in um my Facebook group, and it's this meme uh, or it's this video of LeBron James like picking up his bag and and turning his back and walking away. And I said uh, in the caption, it says, "Customer, the customer says your prices are too high." And then me, I'm LeBron James, I'm walking away. <laughs> so basically, like if they tell you your prices aren't aren't or are too high, like you said, they obviously aren't your target market. Um, so. You more so want to focus on finding the people who are in uh, your target audience, who are willing to pay that amount of money, who make a certain amount of money and wouldn't be would be comfortable with um, paying those dollar amounts. So don't I literally just wrote a post about it. Literally, I think I posted it on my uh, Instagram stories, too. And I basically said, like, don't compromise your business or your prices for the sake of a few. Focus on what you wanted it to be in the first place and find the right people to service. Thank you for all you do. You're welcome. Um, are you still considering opening a storefront? If so, why? Uh, I'm still considering it, not necessarily like immediately, but mostly because I enjoy um, face to face interaction and it's what I'm most familiar with. Um, and it's also a lot easier to sell to a person. Um, when they're in front of your face versus selling to them online. Um, I would also, if I did get a brick and mortar, I probably wouldn't focus as much on the online portion of my business just because you can eliminate so much fraud and things like that uh, from working in a brick and mortar versus online. Um, so I just, I enjoy working in a physical store, helping to style people and watching them try things on and come out the fitting room and all that stuff. Like it just like literally makes my heart smile. So um, I'm still considering it. I don't necessarily know if I'm going to or not. How soon after launching should I offer a discount? Uh, I would say you need to put yourself on a schedule. So for me, I usually do a promotion like two weeks after I launch a collection and then I do one either that following week or the fourth week. And then on the 30 day mark of the day that I launched my uh, collection, I do um, my first markdown. So I mark it down permanently. Then uh, 60 days from that date, I mark it down again. And then 90 days from that date, I'll mark it down again. So you need to put yourself on a schedule of um, when you're going to do uh, promotions and markdowns. Plan it out. I use a calendar. So I, I showed everybody earlier, I literally write it all out in a calendar. So for instance, um, the promotions that I wanted to offer this month were additional 25% off and then additional 35% off. And then my when I start my markdowns, it starts at 40% off. So um, all those promotions that I'm running, I'm making sure that I'm still getting a profit no matter what discount it is that I um, am offering to my customers. So make sure you keep that in mind, too, as you're offering um Discounts or doing promotions. An alternative to open the storefront is seeing if there's a year round pop up place. Yeah, so there's a few um, places like that. Or, well, not a few. There's a couple of places I've seen um, 
around here. Most, But most of them are usually like either in the mall or um, there's like little complex areas of like, you know, like a strip um, that will offer like temporary space. But yeah, that is a good idea. It's a good reminder. Are you planning any events while in New York? If not, I have some ideas. Yeah, so I want to make sure that I, I, I don't have like an actual event plan, but uh, every city that I have planned plans to travel to next year, I plan to host an event of some sort. So definitely in the works. Please do these lives more often. You're helping so many people. I will. It's it's helping me to become <laughs> me helping you is helping me as well to become more comfortable just talking in general and sharing information in my opinions of things because if y'all would if y'all y'all probably won't believe me but i am generally not a talkative person i am quite the loner i am not outgoing at all like if i'm out at a bar or a restaurant or something my friends literally tell you like i'm the person that's like sitting at the bar minding my business on my phone and like some man will come by and like try to flirt with me and i'm like hi and then I'm back to my phone. So, yeah, this is literally helping me to, like, get out of my shell. So as much as y'all appreciate me, I appreciate y'all for listening. <laughs> what goodies do you include in your orders? I don't include anything besides these little cards. So this is an actual picture of um, some of the clothes that were in my initial launch collection. And then I just designed the card to, like, coincide with some of the colors that were in there. Then on the back, it's... Um, just a cute little message and there's a coupon code that they can use in their next order and it tells them to follow us and tag us on Instagram whenever they um place their or wear their merchandise yes love them it can be scary to do it all on your own and so expensive so if anyone's considering it and wants to test it out <laughs> definitely I remember when I got serious about my boutique, my finger accidentally clicked on your YouTube video while you were working at the thrift store. You are real. Thanks for all you do. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's so funny. He says accident. It was a great accident. <laughs> do you think if I get a spot in my local flea market that I'll sell the items that I have on hand? Ooh, I don't know. Um, I, mm, I would say it depends on like what type of flea market it is and like what type of people come to the flea market so like what the flea markets that i've been to they've been totally different so like i've been to a flea market in chicago that was totally different than a flea market that i have attended in st louis so i would say it depends on like the type of crowd that that particular flea market brings and if those people would actually be people who would you know uh support your business you remind me of myself. I have to meet you all. <laughs> do you have videos about pop-up shop prep? I do. Um, Let me see if I can find it real fast for you. I think I have maybe two of them, actually. I'm actually doing... I have, like, three pop-up shops planned for the rest of this year. I'm super excited about it. I haven't did one in a while. Um, let's see. Your channel. Um, oh, look at that. It tells people that I'm live now. Hey. <laughs> I never knew what it looked like on, um, on you guys' end. So now I know. Um, about pop-up shops. I know there is. Okay, there's two. So I have one about my first pop-up shop. It's called My First Pop-Up Shop. And then the other is um, Pop-Up Shops Q&A Tips for Boutique Owners. Let me see if I can share it. Uh, maybe. It's probably going to be really loud. Ooh, getting a Shoot. Okay, let's see. Copy. I'm just copy one of them and then the other one should pop up in the suggested um, videos for after that one. Uh, 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 uh. That's 
how I am getting inspired to do the blog. Yeah. What do you blog about? I'm struggling with starting and what content I want to discuss. I wanted to do dressing for body types, but not that knowledgeable to do it. I don't think you have to be <coughs> you have to be like super knowledgeable to write about anything. I think you just kind of have to be a little bit knowledgeable about it, honestly. Um, so like for instance, when I started sharing now it's starting to get dark. I need like a light right here over over me. But um, when I first started sharing content about owning a boutique, I didn't actually own a boutique. Um, I was working in one. Um, so I didn't know. There were a lot of moving parts of it that I didn't know um, until I was actually in it. But I knew some crucial parts about it. So one of the biggest things most people wanted to know was where to get the merchandise. I knew that part because I had done it many times. So um, I think it's more so like thinking about what you do know versus what you don't know um so as far as what's a blog about um there's various things so i always recommend if, if you talk about it in, in relation to your boutique i recommend that you blog about things that are in relation to what you sell or that you can incorporate into the writing so you don't necessarily have to write it with the intent to sell it but you want to write it with the intent to be able to share the merchandise in the actual post so um for instance, I think I've given this example in another video. Say you have like, so right now I probably have one, two, three, four. I have four different black dresses in my uh, collection at the, at, well, in that bar. So say you want to write a, a blog post about how to style a basic black dress. So you have, or me, I have four different dresses that I can include in this um, blog post. And obviously I would like take pictures of me styling one or styling all of them and showing various ways to style it. So I would recommend thinking of different topics that you could write about and incorporate your um, merchandise into it. What do you think is a good opportunity to do a pop-up shop for new owners like myself? I did my first pop-up shop a month after. I don't even think it was a month. I, I know it was the following month after I launched. I launched November 8th, and then I did my first pop-up shop sometime in December. So I would say the sooner the better. Um, like I said, I enjoy the in-person interaction, and it definitely helps to kind of push your business in a different direction. Um so I definitely made sales, which was nice. And it's just like when we order from a vendor online. So the same questions that we have about the clothing prior to buying it are the same same questions that people have as they're considering buying our merchandise. They're wondering what the fabric feels like. They're wondering if it stretches, um, if it's true to size, you know, all types of there's all types of things that are going through their mind. It's, it's often the same questions that go through our mind as we're selecting the merchandise. So being able to show them the merchandise in person um, and they're able to, you know, feel it and see it and touch it and see if it stretches and all that is super helpful and it makes it a lot easier to sell your merchandise. So I would say the sooner you could do a pop-up shop, the better, but make sure that you are participating in a pop-up shop that is servicing the audience that you want to serve. So all the pop-up shop, pop shops that I have participated in were hosted by a woman who is a, a millennial business owner and uh i knew that everybody that was in her audience was also people that fall into my audience as well so um make sure that wherever you decide to host pop or participate in a pop-up shop that the audience that's going to be there is going to be an audience that um would resonate with your brand thank you for all you do hon you're very informative thanks for listening check out her channel she had one where she was literally preparing for the pop-up shop and she went early with her rolling cart. All nervous, chance came a long way, y'all. <laughs> yes, so funny story. My So my last pop-up shop that I did, was it the last one? I think it was the last pop-up shop I did. I don't know what I was doing or thinking, but I arrived like super late. And it was so funny because so the girl that hosted it, she was actually one of the people on the panel that I was just on after. Uh, over the weekend. So she hosted this really big um, vendor event. So it was literally just vendors, um, business owners. And uh, she's the one I was just talking about, the millennials. So her audience is filled with millennials. And so my very first pop-up shop was with her. 
And my last pop up shop was also at her event. And so this last time she gave me, she knew, like she she believes in my brand so much, which I'm so grateful for. So she gave me like this very nice, big, open uh, spot that was like very well lit. And like you would see it as you're coming through the door, like you couldn't miss it. She gave me like the best spot in the whole place. And I was super late to come set up for the pop up shop. I don't know where my brain was that whole day, but I was super late. I set up everything late. She was calling me, texting me, emailing me, like, where are you at? You still coming? And I felt so bad. But I got there. I set it up. And um, we got the thing rolling. I brought two friends with me this time. So I brought two friends named Brittany. The first time, I only had one friend. So two, the next time, I had brought two friends with me. And one of my friends, Brittany, brought one of her friends. I had no idea who this girl was. She just stepped in and volunteered to help me. And I made I, I made surpassed what my goal was that day. I saw so much merchandise. My One of my friends, Brittany, her her sole job was to collect people's information for um or to uh, get people to follow me on Instagram. So I gained a bunch of followers that day. I made a bunch of sales. It was amazing. So I didn't mean to rant about the pop-up shops. That's so funny. She said I came a long way. I definitely have. But so this time, I'm going even further. I just uh, ordered um, Custom, what are those things called? The detract, retractable. I was gonna say detractable, retractable banners and a tablecloth and all that. Like we're gonna be real official this time, and I can't wait to set up my little space. I'm excited, and I'm gonna definitely um, record it all so you guys can see. Uh, pop up shop. They need to do to pop up shop, pop up and shop on my website. <laughs> Thank you. Did you have a lot of clothes when you did your first pop-up shop? Um, I had two racks of clothing when I did my pop-up shop. So they were these same racks. And I would say I had about, I had less merchandise than this because this front rack has uh, the, the little thin plastic hangers that um, the vendors send your merchandise on. So I would say the amount of merchandise that's on that back rack is the amount of merchandise that I had on both racks when I had my first pop-up shop. My last pop-up shop that I did, I had three racks. One, two. Yeah, I had three racks. These same exact racks, but three of them. Um, and then I brought a bin of clothes that I just kept underneath my table. Um, they were like sale merchant. No, I brought a bin that were like extra sizes of the stuff that was on the racks. And then I had a bin or basket or something that was on the table that had like old styles that I was running a discount on um, for that day. You can also blog about your new arrivals and new trends. Yep, correct. You can blog about fashion news and, and your take on them. You can blog about new fabrics and so on. Great ideas. Yes. I love when other people provide information because my brain be over here like this. It just, information just goes from, it It literally will be at the front of my brain and then all of a sudden I'm on to the next topic and I just forget things. It's, it's ridiculous. My brain is like working in overtime all day, every day. It's probably because I get asked so many questions during the duration of the day. So I go from one thought to the next super fast. I love how hungry you are. I'm now a lifetime follower. I was inspired tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, my God. Y'all be making me want to cry. <laughs> Y'all didn't know I'm emotional. I'm a cry baby. I be crying. <laughs> Thank you, though. I, I appreciate that. Yes, give us something to watch at work. <laughs> I got you, Angelique. <laughs> So Angelique is one of the girls that took um, one of my courses and we did six weeks of talking to each other. I was asking her the hard questions, <laughs> but we had some fun. She made her first sale, which I was so excited about. And I still be in her inbox and she still be in my inbox. <laughs> Do you have an evergreen coupon or do you change coupon codes frequently? I have one evergreen coupon code. Um, so that one is the one that is sent 
out whenever somebody um, signs up for my email list. So that one just always exists. And then um, whenever I'm running like a, a flash sale or just a random promotion, things like that, I create a specific promo code for the duration of that sale or promotion. I enjoyed your try on videos today and your emails. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm trying to get more consistent. So I, I've, I've gotten more consistent with my live videos. Now I'm trying to get more consistent with my emails. That's my next task. So I've been doing good this week. I'm so proud. I gained 115 followers, not on my boutique page. I need to be a lot more consistent over there. But on my Jan Shorts Hey page, I gained 115 followers in the last week. I'm super excited about it. I'm trying to get to 10,000 followers because once I get 10,000, then I get the little swipe up feature on my story. So yeah, I'm working on trying to get there before the end of the year. I am 1,900 people away, and I got 115 followers in one week. So now I'm like, can I double that next week? We'll see. Stay tuned. Doom, doom, doom. <laughs> cry, girl. We all going to cry together. I cry so much. It's ridiculous. Like, I just had, like, the most serious conversations with my best friends. They've been my best friends for, like, 20 years. And I just had to tell them, like, y'all been doing me dirty all year. Like, I am not the emotional friend at all. I've always been the friend that could just do it themselves. I never needed help. I was always the friend that helped everybody. And I'm like, y'all are, y'all been on my back all year. That mess hurts. It is, it has made me so emotional and don't nobody call me ever to see how I'm doing or to see if I need help with anything. Like, whoo, the cry, the crying has been real this year. And I'm just like, ugh, because I hate being emotional. I really do. Dang, a lot of questions just popped up in the in that 30 seconds that I was speaking. Wow. Um new to be new to the business. How can I get more involved in pop-up shops? Uh so I find pop-up shops on the majority of them I find on Facebook, but uh the rest of them I usually find on Eventbrite. Um so I usually just I type in like um vendor events or vendor opportunities. Um, things like that where I live or on Facebook, there are multiple, uh, groups on Facebook that are specifically for vendor events in my area. So there's like St. Louis vendor events, uh, Missouri vendor opportunities. Like I think I'm in like five different groups where people literally just post events all day, every day. And they say they need vendors. And then I just ask the questions I need to ask. And, um, Nine times out of ten, they're not the type of events I want to participate in. But those event, those uh, groups exist. Uh, so I would say check on Facebook and check Eventbrite. Um, I also recommend that people reach out to people who are hosting events because although they don't list that they're having a vendor, sometimes you can convince them that they need a vendor, um, especially if they serve the same audience that you're serving. So it doesn't hurt to ask Um if uh, they'd be interested in having you as a vendor as well. Um, what advice can you give me as far as relaunching my site? I've learned so much and I feel like my first launch was an epic fail. So I just relaunched my website in, um, what was it, last month or the month before. Um, so some of the things that I did leading up to my relaunch were I rethought my brand really as a whole. So I looked at... Um, the colors that uh, I was using prior. So like prior, my website was very, it wasn't very dark, but it was more on the dark bland side. It was very like neutral. Um, I was trying to go for like this semi sexy feel, but I'm not that person. I'm like goofy and stuff like that. So I knew when I, when I relaunched, I wanted to exude the very opposite. I wanted to exude like happiness and vibrancy and things like that so if you look at my website now it's colorful it's pink and yellow uh my banner pictures are the same layout as my old website but the picture in the pictures the pictures are more colorful um they are i'm smiling i'm like posing like i'm literally like my foot is up and I'm like jumping all type of stuff. So I, I rethought, rethought, um, the tone of my brand and like what type of tone I wanted to 
uh, put out into the world. So before it was a little bit more serious. Um, and now it's a little bit more playful, more colorful, more vibrant. Um, I changed my logo. So uh, the name of my boutique is Brazen and the definition of Brazen is to be bold. So my previous logo was like this pretty little cursive um, font. I redid my logo because I'm like, okay, the definition of Brazen is to be bold. So I was like, I'm going to choose a bold logo. Um, and so then I, I utilized that definition um, more in like the things that I was producing for my website. So just being bold in the colors that I chose and being bold in uh, the captions that I wrote and things like that. So really just rethinking all of the different parts of your website, your colors, your tone, your captions, your pictures, all of that. That's really what went into the relaunch of my site for me. Um, I tried to develop more plans for like being intentional with my um, email marketing. So I've been sending a lot more emails now than I was when I first launched or in, in months prior um, and things like that. So, yeah. Coupons. Is there an app for this? Um, I set the coupons up on my um, Shopify app. There's like a button that says discounts. And then it just has me enter the code that I want to be, what I want to be the code. That's about it. How did you add Afterpay to your site? How does that work? Do you recommend adding it if you're just starting? Yeah, I recommend adding it. So it was super easy. I just went on the Afterpay website, filled out the information that they asked, and then they sent me an email saying that I've been accept accepted. Then they sent me another email providing me with instructions for setting up Afterpay on my website. It was super easy, very fast. It took like maybe a couple days to be approved. And so I really like Afterpay. Um, I've had a few people use it since I installed it on the site. And the way it works is basically it allows the customer to break their purchase up into four interest-free uh, payments. And so um, Afterpay takes a percentage of each sale. I forget what that percent is. I, I, don't, I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. But they take a percentage of each sale. But they give you the entire amount of what your what that purchase would be minus the percentage that they take from it um, within like two days of the person making the purchase. So although the per and then the person just pays the money to afterpay. So for instance, say the person's payment is broken up into $12 for $12 payments. You would receive your whole $48 payment minus whatever the fee is that um, afterpay takes. And then the person would just pay afterpay their $12 payments on whatever the schedule is. So I really like it. Um, I think it's a good like sales tool to convince more people to make sales. Um, it's, it's almost like layaway, but they get to take the merchandise with them that day. So it's pretty cool. Um, have you or anyone reading this tried to still be alive? I haven't. I was literally just thinking about it like yesterday or the day before. I want to do it, but I don't I don't know if I can put my, wrap my mind around the like how do you do it? <laughs> I've watched people do it, but I just don't know how I would do it. I don't know. Because I'm although I know how to be a salesperson, I don't know how to like get I don't know. I can't wrap my my brain around it. Like how I'm on live right now and just having a conversation, like I don't think I can wrap my mind around getting on live with the intention to sell versus just having a conversation and naturally having somebody decide that they want to buy something from, you know? So I want to try it. I just don't know how to do it. <laughs> um, how do you set up or go about getting an evergreen coupon? My first time hearing the term. So basically, it's just the coupon that you set that is ongoing. Uh, it doesn't disappear or um, it never changes, basically. On IG, do you have to share to your story to add a highlight or is there another way? I've been struggling with this and I know my 95 followers are like, who is it? Yeah, so you have to share it to your... Um, highlight I mean to your story in order to add it to, to your highlights oh, okay she explained what the evergreen was I just repeated it okay whoops 
Um, I had to get creative to, to try and bring in some funds to pay for my website and the business card and so on. So I got into a hustle mode and took a little money and ordered two different styles of, oh, okay, leggings and went store to store, worked out good, got some leads and orders. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> What site do you use to design your logo? I use Canva to design my logo. Nothing fancy. Same thing everybody else uses. Um, does Shopify still charge a percentage when the customers use Afterpay at checkout? Uh, Afterpay takes a percentage of the payment. Afterpay follow-up. What happens if the customer defaults on their payment? They use Afterpay, get their goods, and go goes. Who pays me? Has that ever happened to you? And how do you get? So you get paid regardless. At the very beginning of this transaction, you get paid, and your dealings with after Afterpay are done. At that point, at that point, Afterpay is dealing directly with your customer. So I just read up on it because I had the same question. Um, um, what was I going to say? Um, basically. Afterpay reaches out to them. So the payments are interest-free, but I think after a certain point of um, late payment or whatever, they get charged an extra fee. And um, basically, Afterpay reserves the right to kind of basically like go after you and your, your bank account um, if you don't keep up your end of the bargain because they agree to terms of uh, terms of service and or have an agreement of terms of service or whatever. So, yeah, mm -hmm. they got to deal with afterpay. <laughs> I keep seeing people do payment options for clothes. Do you recommend this? What do you mean by payment options? I figured it seems like they take the risk because they're loaning the money, right? Yep, that's exactly what it is. Yep. Still deciding on if I want to go with Afterpay, so that's good to know. Yeah, I so I went with Afterpay. I've I've used Afterpay as a customer, and I've also used um Sezzle, which is basically the exact same thing as Afterpay. They work the same way. Um, I think I received like an email from Afterpay or something, so I just decided to go with it. But yeah. Oh, I think the Afterpay was what I was referring to. Gotcha. Yeah, I think it's pretty cool. I've seen some boutiques who says with so many options. Yeah, I've used, so I've used both. I, as a consumer, I like it. I'm like, ooh, I could buy all this stuff right now and only pay $25 for it. <laughs> Feels so good until after pay or Sezzle sends me that notice like they're about to take the next $25. I'm like, dang, I guess. <laughs> How do you add the little box to click on the item and take you to the website on your haul video you did? And how do you add the little box to click on the item and take you to the website on your haul video you did? Are you talking about on my boutique's website, the little button that I have? Is that what you're referring to? Seriously, there's never been a better time to be an entrepreneur. No, I definitely agree. Like, me and my friends talk about it a lot. Like, you can literally sit at home on your computer and make a million dollars. Like, it's a possibility. It's crazy. Absolutely crazy. Oh, there's that husband of mine. He didn't call, though. He texted. <laughs> Let's see what he's talking about. from your phone too yes so like when i first started my businesses and everything like me and my husband would get into it a lot because i was always on my phone so but i was like but that's because my business is all on my phone like i literally ran most of my business from my phone so we would get into it a lot so now i have like phone rules like i just saw so i just got a work purposes phone so mostly because i do consultations a lot and things like that so um i was using uh what's it called Google Voice to have like a, a additional phone number, but it just was too much and not cost too much. It was free, but um, trying to like keep it all separate and then like 
all these apps and taking up space because you guys know I record my videos on this phone, uh, take my pictures on the phone, all that. So I, I got a whole separate phone. But I gave myself phone rules and I, I can't be on the phone after a certain time and all that because there's no distinguishing factor of me working on my business or just being on my phone like a, re a, a regular person. So I just tell myself I can't be on my phone after a certain time. Let's see. I'm using Shopify and I'm confused about the taxes. Is it correct that taxes are only on items from the shipping city? Uh, it can be. So depending on where, what state you're running your business from will determine how the taxes are. So uh, there are destination-based states and then there are, I forget what the other word is. Um, what's the opposite of destination? Um, I don't know. I can't think of what the word is. So basically it's, some states, the taxes are based on the state that you're in. And then in some states, the taxes are based on the state that you are sending it to. So like, for instance, for me, my business is run out of uh, Illinois. Well, I live in Missouri, but my business is registered in Illinois. So the only taxes that I have to charge are to El Illinois um, addresses. So any, any order that's placed in Illinois, I have to charge taxes on. All the other ones, I don't have to. I don't have to charge taxes on. But then there are some states that make you charge taxes based on the state that it's being shipped to. So, yeah. That's a great idea, business line. Yep, I just went in. The, plus, um, you know, I was, Apple just launched a new phone. So I was like, oh, they're going to discount the other phones. Let me go get one of them discounted ones. <laughs> Do you have to have accounts with the financial institutions you have? as an option on your website, EG. If you have PayPal as a payment option, do you have to sign up with them? Yeah. So if you accept um, if you accept payment through PayPal, you have to set up a excuse me, a PayPal um, a PayPal account. And then you can transfer the money from PayPal to your um, bank account. Shipping from NYC. Yeah, I would say look up uh, your state and see if they are a destination-based state or a whatever the other one is. Just type in, is, is New York a destination-based state? Or are taxes charged in NYC based on destination? What all is important to take to a pop-up shop? How many racks, pieces, et cetera? Uh, the number of racks you take depends on the amount of product that you're going to take. Um, and also the amount of space that you're going to have at the place that you are going to be doing the pop-up. Um, the pieces is the same thing. It's subjective. Um, I would say give yourself a goal of how much money you want to make and then make sure you have enough merchandise um, taken with you that would allow you to make that amount of money. Um, please don't laugh. Is $8 too much for shipping one item? It's set at $8 flat, $9 per. You mean like $8 is the amount that you are charging for your flat rate shipping? I would say no, if that's what you're asking. How did I find the margin and mark? down template you use for your product um i created it myself so i didn't find it anywhere i just i i my last boss kind of taught me how to work excel and things like that so um yeah i created it myself i know how to work out the some simple formulas and things like that in there Do you offer worldwide shipping? Do you recommend it? What would you charge shipping? So I just added uh, international shipping to my website. Um, when I first launched, I did offer international shipping and then I took it away because I received a couple of international orders and the shipping was astronomical. So big that I just canceled the orders. I literally contacted the customer and said, Unfortunately, due to the cost of the shipping, we will be unordered to process this uh, or unable to process this order. We've refunded you your payment. I apologize for the inconvenience. That was it. 
Um, and that was because I didn't understand how to make um, international shipping as cost effective or how to make it cost effective. So I removed it, but now I just added it back. And now because I have Shopify. So um, on my website, I offer um, flat rate shipping for all U.S. orders. That's $6.95. And then for any order outside of the United States that's placed, they their orders are, the shipping is calculated based on where it's being uh, shipped to. So once an international order or a person placed an international order, when they get to the screen where they where the shipping is, um, it'll pop up with options for them to choose from. So it'll say USPS Pri Priority International, I think it is, and it'll tell you what the price is based on where it's being sent to. And then they have the option to choose uh, USPS international shipping or international express shipping and then tell them what the price is so that was my mistake the first time i just had a flat rate and uh it was assumed that it was for everybody so now on my website i have it set that my flat rate shipping is literally only for the united states and then any uh place outside of the united states the shipping is calculated based on where the items been shipped to and the weight of that item or that order. So yeah, what's the best way to get exposure to your website? Just keep doing pop-ups and get follows on IG right now. Not a lot of folks know about my site. Um, for me, just consistently posting about it, uh, cold falling into people's um, Instagram, I mean, DMs, uh, sharing stuff on my personal pages and asking people to share all the time. Um, I literally am an advocate for literally asking people to share. Um, and that has helped me a ton in my business. Um, social media, obviously hashtags, utilizing the, the, the right hashtags that resonate with your audience, finding different platforms to share your website on. So a lot of people automatically go for Instagram, Facebook, but there are also Pinterest, Twitter, Snapchat, uh, all types of things. So finding out where you can share your website at and doing it consistently. Consistency is truly key in business. Yep. Ooh, child. I feel like I said I was getting out of off here like an hour ago. <laughs> so funny. When I go on when I go live on Instagram, so Instagram only lets you um go live for an hour. So it always pops up. It tells you when you have like a minute and 59 seconds left. So I'm always mid sentence when the video is getting ready to end. So I end up having to get back on so I can finish my thoughts. And I always end up on there for a whole nother hour every time. <laughs> okay, I'll try. I always feel like I'm worrying people. Girl, please. Nope. I My, my uh, mentality now is if they share it, they care. If they don't, they don't care. And I don't care about them. That's it. <laughs> That's all. I literally like I will put a hashtag at the end of a post and say it'll say hashtag share if you care and people will share. And I'm like, oh, they care. That's cute. <laughs> uh, where did you learn Facebook ads? I learned Facebook ads on my own through trial and error, just trying it out. Uh, I did a lot of research on it and just figured it out over time. Honestly, um, I took a marketing course in uh, March, May. Somewhere around there. I don't know. I took a marketing course that was specifically about ads and uh, I get a lot of people ask me about it. So uh, it was called Power Your Launch. It was all about launching your business, but launching it through ads. However, um, it, I did not find it beneficial to my e-commerce business at all. Um, I found it a lot more beneficial to like my service based business. Um, there were like small bits here and there that were about e-commerce and things like that, but I did not find it very helpful for my boutique. The the parts that he shared about um, e-commerce and things like that were things that I already knew or that I was already implementing in my business. So yeah, I learned it through trial and error and research. Have a good night. It's 9 p.m. in Miami. Time to take care of my little boy boy. I've learned a lot. Thanks for answering all my questions. Literally was taking notes. Oh, thank you. 
Glad to help. Have a good night. Okay, I'll answer one more question. Who's got one more question? And then I'm going to go eat my leftover pizza. I took myself out for pizza earlier for lunch. What are your thoughts on using a publicist for your boutique? There's something else these other known boutique owners don't share in regards to the success. I think it's a good idea. So in my boutique, in my beginner, I don't know if it's I don't know if it's in the beginner course or the intermediate course. <clears throat> but I have a whole section about public relations and um how you can utilize public relations to grow your business. So I think I mean if you can afford a public publicist it could definitely be beneficial, especially a good publicist. I actually went to college for PR, so my, my degree is actually in public relations. So I'm always an advocate for getting a publicist if you can, because I know what the um, I know the value of having a publicist or having someone who can work on your behalf and do so behind the scenes. I know how beneficial that can be to a business or to a business owner. So I think it's definitely um, beneficial or can be. That was a great question. Karen coming through with the good questions. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to go eat some pizza now. And uh, oh, dang, one more. What's your thoughts on Kit, the Shopify? I've never used Kit. Um, I've heard of it, but I've never used it. It's, it's Kit, uh, like it coincides with the Facebook ads. Is that what it is? I've heard of it, but I've never used it personally. Danielle, thank you for watching all two hours and 17 minutes of this video. <laughs> oh my God. My my eventually my YouTube page is gonna be filled with um live videos. <laughs> it's gonna be so crazy. Jesus, I gotta go um try to um edit this vlog. From earlier today hopefully it works it wasn't working earlier I don't know why I'm gonna try to edit that and then um, try to upload it before I go to bed if I don't upload it before I go to bed then I'm gonna upload it in the morning so thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time bye